Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we ask your spirit now to move among us, to be with us, and to speak to us this day. We ask in your son's name. Amen. Recently, Jonah Jensen, who was an ACM of the Tri Conference, was in our building for a meeting. And as she had not been in this building before, her role as ACM, I gave her a grand tour. We walked from the sanctuary to Dunsmore Hall. I showed her my office and the kitchen. And then we came to the nursery. We got to the nursery, she said, oh, this I like to see. I didn't ask her what she liked specifically, obviously, the variety of toys, the picture in the back, or the fact that a nursery shows that it is indeed used and busy. I didn't ask her because the answer was going to be all of it. What she liked to see was a place within our congregation that showed that children are valued and treasured. She liked to see evidence that we are seeking to follow the call of Jesus in this morning's gospel passage to welcome children and therefore welcome him. Because unfortunately, that's not the assumed reality within churches in America and certainly in our culture. Now that sounds a little ridiculous to say, because who else in our culture is more valued and treasured than children? Even the phrase, think of the children, has become almost a trope for comedy as an overused argument in politics and in conversations. But I believe that we don't value children as much as we think we do in our society, and that we can do so much better at welcoming and valuing children. Now, the any place to begin an examination is probably at home, and I have several, a half page at least, of notes uh, about our congregation. Except two things happened, and I wrote those notes. One, it felt weird and odd, and I never quite got the sound right. And two, the sermon was really long. So if you want my notes about things we might imagine as a congregation for valued children, I'll be happy to share them with you. But the bottom line is this. While there are always ways we can improve, and there are ways we can improve as a congregation in valuing our children, I think that we do actually value them. There's any ways of improvement are how we live out that value. But we do value our children, and not just our kids, but the kids outside our walls. I want to spend more time, this is why I cut that part of the sermon, talking about society. Because while valuing children is true, I think, for this congregation, I do not believe is true for our society and our country. And I think we can do so much better. Now, our, our culture values our kids. How many parents are out there trying to get their kids the best of everything? Me? Uh, every parent in this room? We value our kids incessantly. I don't believe we as a society or culture value children in general. Especially not those kids. And you can decide who those kids are. But there definitely are the ones we label those. And there are lots of places I see this. I see this in our education funding. Or not funding as the case may be. How often do we place getting a new business or developing a piece of land above the property taxes needed to, needed to fund our schools by granting TIF status to so many places that don't need them? How, or how often do we cut education funding to get a new tax cut or because a different program needs it more? I saw a commercial several months ago advocating for our schools and encouraging people to cut off the box tabs from the things they buy at the store. Which is well and good to do, and please do cut your box tabs, and if you have no place to put them, I know several kids, JR, mine, and others, that will be happy to take them to the schools on your behalf. But what if we simply funded our schools well enough that it didn't need box tabs? What if we 
simply as a society said, box tabs are silly. Let's actually put the money where our mouth is and fund our schools. And don't get me started, our teachers, how little they're valued. Although I imagine you could ask Carol or Andrew and they could get started any time they wanted. I see our society's lack of caring for children in our schools. We don't value children. I see also the gun debate, how we've processed that debate. A colleague of mine posted this, this on Facebook this week, a statue that she shared in honor of her children having to go through active shooter drills this week at their elementary school. It was a statue of a kid huddled under a desk in fear. And it broke my heart. I'm not going to go on a gun rights rant in this sermon. I acknowledge that our particular culture, heritage, and the Second Amendment make any conversations about guns in this society controversial and full of strong feelings. But I want to say this. The way that so many in our country have stated that the mass school shootings we've seen in the past couple of years are simply the price of freedom it makes me wonder how much we value our kids. <clears throat> because if we truly value their safety, we would do the hard political work. And trust me, I am not naive. It would be hard, hard, hard <coughs> political work to find some solutions to find some ways to make our children safer. If we truly valued our children, we would say that no kid should have to go through an active shooter drill. That even one kid killed in a preventable shooting is too many. And the last thing that made me think we don't value kids in this country the way we treat those we might consider other. It's ironic, because in this passage, it was those considered other that Jesus was really referring to. Children in his society were not considered like adults. They were not valued and treasured. It's not Jesus taking a person that we all know is positive and saying, hey, look at this person. Children were the least of these. They couldn't own property. They couldn't work yet. They were a burden. They were all but property, especially with girl children. And Jesus grabs a child because it's a symbol for his disciples and society of those who are least well thought of, who have the least power. And asks his disciples, how do you treat those people? How do we treat those who are least of these and children? The answer is not God. Just this week, our government announced new quotas for refugees entering our country, for those fleeing war and violence. Those who, to quote the Statue of Liberty, are the huddled masses yearning to be free. Our new quota is 30,000 people a year. That's 15,000 less than last year. And last year was already the lowest on record since they started keeping records in 1968. In a world of several ongoing wars and refugee crisis tearing Europe apart, we are taking less children and adults in need than ever into our rich country. Because we don't value the least of these, and we don't value children. As we speak, there are still hundreds of children kept in government custody because they were separated from their parents at the border. Even though the courts have ruled they have to be returned, and even though the program and the policy that separated them officially ended months ago. And as we speak, our government has proposed a compromise measure that will keep families in jail like settings for years until their court cases are heard because the risk that they might not come back to court is greater than the risk of children 
being kept in custody for multiple years because of choices made by their parents. I could go on and on. But to me, anyway, the reality seems very clear. Our country does not value children who are not privileged or rich or the right color or from the right part of town or who act and say and do differently than what we do. We simply don't. We have to come to grips with that and understand it. Because then, then we, we can begin to change it. And that's the good news here. That's the gospel in this whole message. Is that we're not required to keep living out these patterns. But we can do better. We can embrace new ways of being in the world, new ways of imagining the world, imagining our country, of imagining how we treat kids. Imagine if all the things I just listed were the opposite of reality. Imagine if we cared enough about our schools to fully fund them and didn't see them as competition for all sorts of other priorities. Imagine we respected our teachers as much as the entertainers and our CEOs. Imagine if we saw migrant children and refugee children stuck in war zones and war as our children and offered them just as much love and care as we gave to our own kids. Or as we give, and we do give, to the kids who walk through the doors of our congregation. What a different, amazing world we'd be living in. It would be a kingdom world. A world infused with God's dreams for what we can be as a society, as a culture, as a human race. And it's a world God's working towards. That's what the Gospel tells us here and elsewhere. It's why Jesus calls us to care for the children, to care for the least of these, because that's what God wants us to do, and that's what God already is doing. And because God's doing it, we're promised, we can indeed get there. We have our parts to play in voting, in advocating, in loving those around us, in being people who value and care for children and the least of these and all people in the world. But another world is possible. Another way of being can happen, can be real. If only we care enough about our children to face and change the political realities around us. If only we have enough will to take the hard actions and make hard choices. I'm not a political strategist. I don't hand lay out what all the details might be. But I believe the vision of a world where we care for our children and our people as God does is the vision we as a church are called to offer and to work towards. Because I believe it's a vision that God wants us to live into. So be glad for our nursery. It's a good sign for this congregation. It's a symbol of the ways that we have indeed cared for children and keep caring for children. I will tell you, my own children love it here. We're doing something right as a congregation. But as we celebrate what we do well, let us keep imagining how the world might reflect that same reality that same caring, and that same love. Welcome the children, Jesus says, and therefore welcome me. Let us do so here, let us do so out there, let us do so around the world.